Greetings and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV. So now we're going to move into a documentary with a girl named Sparkle. I don't know if you remember her from the docuseries, but prior to that, this American Idol generated singer back from 1990, I think, met with R. Kelly, became protege, and then introduced herself and her family to R. Kelly. So in this video, I am going to share with you an interview. I'm going to share with you some music. I'm going to share with you some ideas that could possibly prompt the classic study of preparation to bring down R. Kelly. And she was the original person. Um, we're going to listen to a really disturbing video about what she says her father told her about R. Kelly when he first met her, um, when he first met her father. Um, now, I know R. Kelly got some, you know, wild streaks about himself. He's very cool, down to earth, laid back dude. But I know he's not crazy. So... <laughs> I mean, not crazy in the sense of wanting to, you know, test a father, but we're going to listen. So, and I definitely thank you so much for all your comments and pushing these ideas out there so that if someone possibly sees our channel, they're going to be able to add some things up if they weren't able to uh, know what was really going on. They may have, may very well have never seen some of these interviews. So let's get started with what we're going to do today. Sweet things in the morning time. All you do is hurt me. And think that everything is fine. You better be careful what you say. You better be careful Because it might turn around on you. You better be careful what you do. You better be careful Because somebody. That song was made by Sparkle, featuring the artist R. Kelly on the album Sparkle, released in 1998. Be Careful is a song by American singer Sparkle from her 1998 debut album. The song reached number three on the U.S. Billboard Rhythmic Hot 100 and number one on the Hot R&B Hip Hop Play Artist single. It reached number four in the Netherlands and number seven in the United Kingdom. So um, the songwriter was R. Kelly. The producer was R. Kelly. Um, Sparkle Singles cr uh, Chronology, Be Careful, 1998. Time to Move On, 1999. So they were having some issues, okay? So we're going to look at an interview right now to share with you um why she possibly even named her video, her videos and her songs that actually reached the top charts for six weeks. So it was stuck in our minds. It was subliminally stuck in the minds of society members who listen to R&B to get our attention possibly. But be careful. That's a very strong title. Be careful. And, you know, I believe and I, I, I truly believe that music has a subliminal undertone to it. And I do believe that people speak from their words. Um, and, yeah, time to move on. So let's listen to the interview. So the full video is going to be linked in the description box below. But we have gotten it from CBS This Morning and The Morning Show. 2002, the singer Sparkle, whose real name is Stephanie Edwards, claimed her niece was the underage girl in that infamous sex video featuring R. Kelly. Well, although a jury acquitted R. Kelly, surviving R. Kelly now credits Sparkle with really being one of the first to shine a light on some of his alleged abuses. You better be careful what you say to me. In 1998, Be Careful, Sparkle's duet with R. Kelly was the number one R&B hip-hop song for six weeks. But now, you don't even respect me, 
But about four years later, their professional relationship crumbled amid accusations Kelly was sexually abusing Sparkle's then 14-year-old niece. I was the first person who spoke up and out against him and did it alone. Sparkle said... That sounds like she's very proud of that. I did it by myself. I did it alone. She initially wanted Kelly to help her niece become a rap artist. I didn't just throw my niece to the wolves. I introduced my entire family to Robert, not just my niece. My sister and my brother-in-law brought her down to the studio. You talk about in the docu-series feeling guilty to the point where you choked up and you, you cried. I should have never introduced my family to why do you still blame yourself? I just feel partially responsible for 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 the introduction. Oh, what's up? She says she became concerned when her niece started showing up at Kelly's studio on a company. Sparkle claims she even called Child Protective Services. Her worst fears, she says, were confirmed when she saw a video of what she believed was Kelly and her niece engaged in a sex act. I have to stop there. What she believed, what she believed is not factual evidence and um what happens next what she says next i need you to pay attention to the guy comes over he shows me the first few seconds of the tape and it's her i don't need to see anymore okay who is this guy that shows up is it jim dare goddess is it um and why once she sees the 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 14 year old niece she doesn't need to see anymore so did she not see r kelly in the video or what because he was not able to be identified in that video so um hmm amazing amazing how these women just happen to show up and be in their in r kelly's circle and then this pops off, you know what I mean? It's just so amazing. It was like it was a, a setup from the beginning that just showed up and just followed suit to the traditional classic way of bringing someone down. It just makes sense to me. What about you? Sparkle was a key prosecution witness at Kelly's trial for child pornography, but her niece, her sister, and her brother-in-law, who had become Kelly's guitarist, refused to testify. Kelly was acquitted in 2008. I was kind of ostracized, if you will. From your um, family? Yes. Is it your understanding that people in your family settled or had some sort of agreement with R. Kelly? I don't know if any money was exchanged, you know, from Robert to them to shut up or if they signed something. I don't know if he threatened them. I don't, I don't know anything. So she doesn't know anything, but she sees this tape and then she says, I am going to take the um, initial steps to contact authorities. I'm going to do all this stuff. And the parents of the child never came forth. So it's ironic. I think it was a preconceived notion that something was taking place and she just jumped in it. Or someone got into her head from surviving R. Kelly uh, movement and and just planted those seeds what do you think they're not talking you're not sure if your niece is with r kelly but are you concerned about her safety if you think she still interacts with him on some level of course i am because mentally the girls he's got them brainwashed i'm really and brainwashed is another term that has gone on since the course of the beginning of this situation with R. Kelly. How do you brainwash a person if they, see, I don't believe it was brainwashing. I mean, and, and, and why do you think they're using the terminology brainwashing? Is that what they do in, in the industry to get us to buy into the lies and the schemes and the manipulation that they use to sell records to, to promote, um, just like they're doing right now with the Will Smith situation. I mean, if that had been anyone else, they would have been incarcerated, felonious assault, et cetera, et cetera. But now they're promoting his his um, his lifestyle. They're promoting everything that's going on in his life. And um, but yeah, back to R. Kelly, it's just amazing how all these things were how she knew nothing, nothing. Scared of that. 
R. Kelly's attorney, Steve Greenberg, told CBS News Sparkle's claims were absurd. Sparkle is using her rejected allegations to try and jumpstart her failed career, he said. It is beyond transparent. How much of the Me Too movement played in your decision to speak out? I wish they were um, along for the ride way back when, in 2001, when I came up. I feel sometimes that black women, we don't get the same, um, you know, notoriety or, or interaction, so to speak, as our white counterparts. And I wanted that to change. What do you think so different about this moment culturally now? They're believing now. They're listening more. What do you want to happen? What's next? I don't know what's next, but I hope that Robert gets help. He really needs to get help. And then they can send him off to jail. Well, Sparkle released a new single titled We Are Ready around the time the Lifetime docuseries began airing. In it, she sings about how she will no longer suffer in silence. R. Kelly has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing and no new criminal charges have been filed against him. Nora. Now, this second video is from press release. This was um, submitted on YouTube about six months ago, and it's talking about the suffering of coming forward and lying against R. Kelly and what her career has endured. Let's listen. And that Rob had been found guilty in his federal trial, she covered her eyes and bawled. No one has waited longer for this news. For the past 20 years, Sparkle, whose real name is Stephanie Edwards, has been trying to convince the world that the singer physically mistreated her teenage niece. The decades-long crusade cost the 46-year-old her closest relationships and stifled her music career. Sparkle first introduced her niece, who was 12 years of age, to Rob in 1997. Unfortunately, this would be a decision that still haunts her to this day. Back then, she thought he would be the best person to help launch the aspiring rapper's career. He was a musical genius and was also producing her first album at the time. Years later, in 2001, she watched a video with her niece and Kelly. That video and that moment would forever change her life. She said she was disgusted and knew that she needed to act quickly, so she called the police. She Why would you call the police when you were the one who did the introduction? You did the introduction. You know what was going on with this man. You knew, and there is no real allegations that you even have. You're just... Are you frustrated? Is something going on between you and R. Kelly that now you want to get back at him because he's not moving to the tune of your vocal drum? I mean, it had to be something going on there. What do you feel right now? Why would she call children's services if all she saw was a tape and there was no, and according to the 2008 federal trial, there was no allocation that Robert Sylvester Kelly was, or R. Kelly was in that video. It's just so ironic to me. Classic trap up. Also went public with the allegation in a radio interview the following year. She later testified in Rob's 2008 trial in which he was found not guilty of the charges and told her story once again in the explosive Lifetime documentary in 2019. But until the recent verdict, it often felt like she was shouting into a void. Her niece's parents stood by Kelly, who was accused of buying their silence in a recently unsealed federal indictment, and they also didn't speak to Sparkle for a decade. She watched comedians and TV shows mock the tape while bootleg copies were hawked on street corners across America for $10. The music industry wanted nothing to do with her. Finally, the justice system and the wider culture has caught up with Sparkle's call that Kelly be held accountable for his actions. She spoke with The Cut about what it's like to hear a guilty verdict and how speaking out against someone so powerful has come with great personal loss. After all these years of insisting that Kelly mistreated her niece, she explained what's it like to hear he's been convicted 
and that he could possibly spend the rest of his life in prison. She said, I didn't think I would be emotional, but I am. It's just been a long time for me dealing with this. On the one hand, I think I'm a little sad because Robert was my ex-mentor and what he did was just a punch to my chest. And I'm also relieved, thank God they got it right this time. At the first trial, nobody believed me. I hope all the girls, boys, and women, affected by him, are also breathing a sigh of relief. There's finally some justice, though we have to wait and see what the sentence is. Did you hear all the girls, boys, and women who were affected by him? So she was the one who officially started the rumors of uh, the men, the boys being, you know, molested and that. I just wanted you to hear it. When it comes to her niece, she said they are no longer in contact, but she's definitely thinking of her and hoping that she's okay. Even if she... To me, I think she was trying to devour her niece's ability to do what she was going to do with R. Kelly as far as, you know, I introduced you, I should get some type of royalty, I should get some type of accolade, and you didn't give me anything. Um, she already knew how R. Kelly was to work with, and she knew that he was an, a, a serious go-getter when it came down to his music. So maybe they switched places because I never heard her say that she, at the young age of 15, 6, 17, I think, 18, when she started the music industry, um, when she met with him that he was trying to come on to her, she never says it in any of her interviews, but she did say it from a third party, but never from her mouth. Doesn't feel the same about her. She's still thinking of her first, and then of all the others who were affected. Sparkle said she kept up with the trial by reading various articles, but it was also very important to her that she maintained her peace. Hearing the details has been really hard. Rob's behavior was so much worse than she even thought. She continues to pray for everyone who had to relive those moments during their testimony. Thankfully, the atmosphere this time felt very different from the trial in 2008 because the last 20 years have been a lonely road and very exhausting. Sparkle stopped working with Kelly in 1999 after he produced her first album, largely because of creative differences. When asked when did she start becoming worried about her niece, she said it was in 2001 when she heard from people in Rob's camp that she was hanging out at the studio by herself. She was there, just wandering the halls, with no parental guidance. The people were saying, something doesn't look right with this picture. She told her sister, who is also the young girl's mother, who would then reply, Rob is her godfather, everything is fine. Nonetheless, Sparkle was still worried, so she called children and family services, anonymously, because she did- Was she worried because of the fact that she got kicked out of the camp? And who was this person in the camp that told her that this girl was roaming the halls? How did she get there? Who let her in? All this stuff. I mean, is she really, did, did she create a career of rapping? What actually happened to the niece? And we'll, we're going to get into that too. I didn't want people saying she was some disgruntled ex-protege. But she couldn't go much further than that. Since she was just an aunt, she didn't have the rights of a parent or guardian to get involved. Later that same year, a lawyer contacted Sparkle and showed her the tape. She said she was disgusted and shattered. Initially, her niece's parents wanted to see the tape, but then they changed their minds and stopped responding to her. At that point, her relationship with Rob was done. She figured he had gotten to them, but she would never really know what happened. She said she called the police they took her statement and then basically told her their hands were tied if her sister and brother-in-law didn't want to speak. She couldn't grasp why they were not getting it. This person mistreated their daughter, why weren't they there? There was basically no more communication with most of her family 
besides one brother, for the next 10 years. She said in the beginning, she was devastated and hurt, but the kicker was that her sister, brother-in-law, and niece were still going to Robert's concerts. They would continue to attend parties and even continue to visit the singer's home. She couldn't believe that they were still engaging with him. He was the one who did wrong, yet she was the one that they refused to speak to. She said she had to laugh to keep from crying because the fact that she introduced them still haunts her a little, but she also knows it's not her fault. In speaking out for her niece, she spoke out for a bunch of girls, even those she didn't know. She took all of the backlash to ensure that it was known what the singer was doing. And she appears to have no regret, because if she had to, she would do it all over again. Sparkle's career was shattered after the fact. It used to be everybody loved Sparkle, but when she stopped working with Rob, that all disappeared. Rob was very powerful in the industry, they didn't care what he was doing, she felt disgusted with the music business. For the next 18 years, she only put out a couple of songs. She also did a lot of private events and made a few dollars, but at one point, Sparkle shared that she was homeless and would have to crash at a friend's place. Despite the hit to her career, Sparkle also has no regrets about participating in the Lifetime documentary. She was actually happy that she did it, because otherwise, maybe, we wouldn't be here with this verdict. After the documentary aired, more girls got the guts to come forward. Of course, people were posting to her social media that she was a liar and clout chaser, but she also received a lot of support via direct message and emails saying that they wished she were their aunt. She said it feels good to have more support, but when it comes to the verdict, she doesn't care about the vindication. She doesn't trust it, as people will turn on you in a minute. Even after speaking for the second time, she hadn't heard from any industry people. It's been radio silence, and no one has apologized for shutting her out. But she continues to write music, including a new track, entitled Open Letter. The song is to her family, about what happened, and writing it was a huge release. With Rob having a number of cases pending, Sparkle's hoping she won't be called to testify in another trial. She said, I'm praying I'm not called to testify at another trial, because I've already said my truth. But if I am, I will surely be there, to share it all over again. I do have more to say, and more insights into what happened. I lost it all, but I have made gains, as well. Integrity is very important to me, and I still have mine, intact. I didn't take any money from Robert. I didn't let anyone deter me, from speaking up. I know that I'm going down in history, being on the right side, of truth. Now we're going to hit a video interview from The Breakfast Club. And I'm going to just share a few excerpts from this 35-minute video. And I'm we're going to talk about it, especially the relationship with her father and what her father said that R. Kelly told him, according to Sparkle. So let's get at it. Sparkle! What up? Welcome! Oh Thank my you. gosh, Sparkle is Ooh. here. Now, Sparkle, I have to say, when I first found out about the uh, Surviving R. Kelly docuseries, they had asked me to moderate a panel. Uh, the first thing I asked Lifetime, because this was before it came out, I said, is Sparkle in it? <laughs> and really? They said, yes, yeah, Sparkle is in the okay, docuseries. Dope. All right. Why'd you ask that, though? Well, because I knew you had ties to R. Kelly from back when you were his artist. Mm -hmm. And then I knew that it was your niece and you had testified in the trial. So I figured that would be some powerful testimony, somebody who was there firsthand. The yeah. Yep, you know. Yep. Yep. So let's I start from the beginning, it. Sparkle. Oh, Lord. Now, how did you hook up with R. Kelly? Okay. As far as recording artists. Let's, st let's start there. Yeah, let's get let's that start there. Right. Okay. Um, 89. It's a little way back there, but... Yeah, I was like um, one. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Evie. No, you weren't. That's my story. You were in college. That's my story. I'm sticking with it. Yeah, 89, in the studio, he was um, working on Billy Ocean at the time. Mm -hmm. And actually, a girlfriend introduced me. She and he were real cool. She wanted him to hear me sing. Mm -hmm. 
And um, I didn't sing for him that day, though, um, and didn't, you know, keep in contact or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But fast forward, um, I, you know, I started a um, little bit seeing him out in clubs or whatever. And then in 92, I was asked to come down and sing for him. And then I am the girl um, behind all the backgrounds on Aaliyah's first album. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got to sing that, except for AJ Nothing But A Number. You know, yeah. When yeah, when that came out, I was like, "What's this song?" I was like, "This, this not a song that we did, you know." But you know, yeah. So I, at the time, really amazing, right? AJ nothing but a number. She had nothing to do with it, just like Drea Kelly had nothing to do with being around. Well, Drea was different because she came after, but. She was there from the very beginning. She had nothing to do with the Aaliyah situation. Wow. And then introduced her niece, 14 years old. Okay. When you first met him, was there anything, did you see anything funny going on with R. Kelly with him into young girls? Or did you know he was dating Aaliyah at the time? Did you know that they have a relationship? Did you see any of that when you were doing background vocals for R. Kelly? I ain't see not a thing. The, you know, studio. I ain't seen not a thing. Now, Really? Hmm. Life, people don't understand studio life. It's look, I was working a job in 92 when he came and was like, you know, can you do this? Do this for me. Do the backgrounds for me. I was working a nine to five. So I would, you know, leave the job, come to the studio, do my job there. You know, in, I'm in the booth at the, you know, at the mic singing pretty much the whole time. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anything going on. But mind you, Barry Hankerson is Hankerson is right there. That's his Aaliyah's uncle. uncle, blood uncle. Her parents are there. Who's thinking to be looking for anything? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I wasn't thinking about anything outside that's going on. You know what I mean? So, no, I didn't see nothing at and all. Watching the docuseries, you see that he really did keep people separated. Oh, yeah. That, that's, that's what he does. He doesn't like for you to fraternize with each other. Like, he had other artists, you know, other than, other than myself, although I'm... And I believe that that is because people can conspire against him and create even more of a distraction for him. Um, he's too busy doing music in the industry and people are coming left and right, accusing him of this and that. Hell yeah, I would keep people apart too. I would do the same thing. Call it narcissism or whatever you will, but I would do the same thing. The only one that came out, um, he didn't want us talking to each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We couldn't, we couldn't fraternize. He didn't want me speaking to anybody because he was like, you're here. You have to act like you're here. You know what I mean? And you that said you would try yeah, to speak that, to people and they wouldn't even yeah, respond. Yeah, I was like, what's going on? I was like, that ain't me. I'm not that chick. I'm going to speak to you. Mm -hmm. I, I won't if I don't want to, but I'm going to speak to you. You know, and I tried to stick it to him a few times because I'm like, dude, whatever. I'm going to speak to these people. Mm -hmm have these people around me and I can't say hey like mm -hmm. come on y'all we've seen Aaliyah's mother make a statement and mm -hmm. say that what people are saying happened didn't happen and that it's a lot of lies mm -hmm. in the docuseries how do you respond to something like that well I mean I don't know her story you know what I mean one of your best friends actually said they, they actually seen it if I remember yeah right, um, actually she's an actual girl that I met while working on Aaliyah's um, album. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't even know her then. I met her there. You know what I mean? What's her she name? Was, I don't want to disrespect yeah. her. I just don't remember her name. Javante. Javante. She's one Javante. of the girls who was like um, Aaliyah's posse, so to speak, or her background. Mm -hmm. They were called Second Chapter. It was three girls. And they were in the studio at all times. They're on the album. You know, one of the girls is rapping on you. You can hear, hear, you can hear it all through, you know, Aaliyah's first album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, for yourself, did R was R. Kelly ever strange to you? Like, did he ever come on to you? You know, R Robert, of course, he liked me. You know, he's a handsome guy. But I, you know, I didn't want to mix match those lines, so to speak. You know what I mean? I'm there to do a job. Mm -hmm. I'm there to get my career on thereafter the Aaliyah situation. You know, from 92 to 96, I had no really real interaction with him at all. So I don't know anything that was going on. I didn't go on no tours with him. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't do any of that. But, you know, in 96, I was, you know, asked to come back and do some more backgrounds for him, for him I thought. And two songs in, he was like, yo, he came in the booth, yo, we gonna work on your stuff now. You know what I mean? Um, and then after that, working on, my, um, working on my stuff, then I introduced the family. Right. So you never had a relationship with R. Kelly? No. That type of relationship? No. Mm -hmm. And we had a business, time. but me and Robert were real tight. We were really cool, like family. 
I thought so. Right. Right. You know. And at that time, the marriage to Aaliyah had happened, but you thought it was all a hoax. Yeah. Like, who, who, who's thinking a 15-year-old is going to marry? Like, your mama and daddy are there. Right. Your uncle is there. Who's even thinking that? Like, did you think that was real? Um, at the time. I remember before, at that time. Before the, the, right, before the license even uh, yeah, showed up. I remember you know? at like, that time I did think it was fake. Yeah, come fake. on. And there was you a know? rumor, and they kind of played into it. Like, exactly. They showed in the but, documentary. But Robert, but Robert does that. Like, even... It, Prior to, you know, my album coming out, you know, we're we're at the McDonald's called Rock and Roll McDonald's in Chicago that we used to hang out at. He hung out at a lot. Um, Which I don't get it. That grown ass man hanging out yeah. McDonald's with high school kids. You know, and, and and these two girls came, oh, R. Kelly, R. Kelly, R. Kelly. And then, then they stood back, oh, is that your girlfriend? And he was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, tapped on. I was like, and... Don't mm-hmm. be saying that shit to them. I was right. like, I don't want nobody thinking that we like that like that. You know what I mean? And he was like, no, 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 see, this will make them, you know, buy your records, you know, if, if I'm your, you know, if they think I'm your guy. Like you um, do a song, yeah. like, be careful, so, yeah. you put the video so out together, it's he, more he, interesting. He, yeah, he, he does those type of things. So, you know, even with the Aaliyah thing, the hoax thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. When, did, when did you realize that he was into young girls? When, when did that finally, when, when did that finally surface that you realized, like, damn, this he really likes young girls? I didn't realize that until the tape surfaced. So you seen the tape? So the tape surfaced. You had no clue, no no. idea what was going on. Now, do you see the lie? Do you see the lie right there? She had no clue, but yet she was just at the McDonald's where all the young kids hang out. Not saying that this happened or not, but the telltale signs were there and she lied completely in her interview. She lied immediately. Right there. She lied. So no idea. No idea. And I, you know what? I wish I had of known before introducing my family. Like, I introduced my entire family. We're a musical family. Mm-hmm. And look, Robert had just got a situation with Interscope. He was taking me to Interscope. He was leaving the other um, artists on Jive. You know what I'm saying? So he was going to need bodies. Right. My family's a musical family. Let me see if I can put them in there. Yeah, and, everybody yeah and you know, let them be stars like he was about to make me. You know, so I introduced my niece. There you go. She was trying to come up and she wanted her family to come up and she wanted everybody around her to be connected to R. Kelly. And that's the reason why she introduced the niece. By any means necessary, we're a musical family. By any means necessary, and that includes even putting her 14-year-old daughter in harm's way or niece in harm's way. Um, she, can, You know, my sister and my brother-in-law brought her down. I didn't just throw her to the wolves. You know what I mean? So I, I, I introduced her correctly. Then I introduced other nieces and nephews. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're musical. They had some success. Su- 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 uh, success. Some success. <laughs> Got you. Uh, overseas. And... Um, you know, I want to introduce them. And then my brother-in-law, her, my niece's um, father. Right. He's a dope guitarist. I was begged Robert to listen to him. You know, he came down and he's on a few of his albums playing. You know what I mean? So I was trying to spread the love mm-hmm. through the family. I, I, you know, I wanted to give, you know, you know, I wanted to give more to my family and bring them along the support, with right. what God had blessed me with. So, what, hey. What was your reaction when you seen that tape? And where were you when you see the tape? Did you get calls before him? Like, yes. This? So tell us let, how you first found out about that tape. Let me, where you let me go back just a, a quick second. So prior to the tape coming out, I got two phone calls from two separate people in Robert's camp. Mm-hmm. And they were saying to me, yo, something ain't right. Your niece down here by herself too much. What's going on? I'm not there. I don't know any of this. I get on the phone with my sister immediately. What's up? Like, what you doing? Why you got her down there by herself? People are calling me. Something ain't right. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but why would y'all think something was right But if, if y'all didn't know they what was were, going on? They were mm-hmm. telling me that right. something didn't look and right. And I parents, didn't know that because I'm not there. And your pa- her parents were saying, no, everything's good. Everything's good. good. Everything's cool. You know what I mean? So what I do is I call the Department of Children and Family Services. Why? To go investigate. Why? Before you knew what was Before going on. Before I knew well, what anything. Something had to give you a Yo, feeling to do I, that. That's people were calling Just were from... people calling me saying, it don't look right. Something's not right. And at that time, you and R. Kelly were good. We were good, but I hadn't seen Robert. Oh. I was away from him. You know what, what I mean? happened with? Okay, so when you did put out your project, right, mm-hmm. which did well, mm-hmm. what happened after that? 
So Robert had, um, we were actually working on the second album. Woman's Threat, his song, mm -hmm. that's actually my song. Wow. So, yeah, I recorded three songs on my second album mm -hmm. um, before asking to be released from him. He finally, you know, let me go. Did, why did you ask to be released? Because it wasn't a good space with he and I no more. He was inserting himself in my personal life. He didn't want me to have a boyfriend, mm. you know what I mean? Then there was an incident where um, I had told someone, one of the other artists that he had, that he was only taking me to Interscope. He got pissed off at that with me. So those two things, I was just like, look, this ain't a good space. And um, actually, before my... Before the first album came out, there was a big meeting because Robert said he was taking my deal away from me. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? So he did because I had a boyfriend and because I had told uh, this person that, you know, I was the only person going to Interscope. And he was pissed. Damn. So there was a big meeting. Mm -hmm. um, Barry Hankerson, Robert. I brought my parents. I'm grown now, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm over 21, right? Um, and the meeting happened at the Hyatt out in, at the O'Hare um, Airport area in Chicago. And a couple of my other family members also came to pray. <laughs> um, we sitting there. Robert's trying to get, you know, Barry Hank is trying to get us back on track, you know, everything, you know, see if this can happen, if the album's going to come out or what have you. Mm -hmm. The killer for me, and I should have took heed at that point, was he sat there and speaking to me and my parents, and he told my mom and my dad, your daughter's so fine, I jerk off just looking at her. I'm sorry. You said that to your dad? My mama and my dad. What? Now, this is what I don't get. <laughs> if he has had all the opportunities to be with her since 1998, why would he tell his, her mother and father something as ignorant as that? And he's very respectful. Robert Sylvester Kelly, one thing you could say based on all the interviews that we've had, we've watched him. He's very professional. It's only when he gets on that stage that he becomes that R. Kelly, you know, uh, sexual addict, I believe. I think he acts it out on stage. But this right here, mm, what are your views? Because this caught me right here. And then she said it so fast, and then she said, mm, mm, mm. let's listen again. Before, my, before the first album came out, there was a big meeting because Robert said he was taking my deal away from me. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? So he did because I had a boyfriend and because I had told uh, this person that, you know, I was the only person going to Interscope. And he was pissed. Damn. So... There was a big meeting. Mm -hmm. um, Barry Hankerson, Robert, I brought my parents. I'm grown now, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm over 21, right? Um, and the meeting happened at the Hyatt out in, at the O'Hare um, Airport area in Chicago. And a couple of my other family members also came to pray. <laughs> came to pray? To pray. Is it P-R-E-Y? Pray? Cause I know we ain't in church. We ain't, <laughs> we ain't in church in this interview, but okay. Um, we sitting there, Robert's trying to get, you know, Barry Hank is trying to get us back on track, you know, everything, you know, see if this can happen, if the album's going to come out or what have you. Mm -hmm. The killer for me, and I should have took heed at that point was he sat there and speaking to me and my parents and he told my mom and my dad, your daughter's so fine, I jerk off just looking at her. I'm sorry. You said that to your dad? My mama and my dad. What? What, what, what did your mom and your daddy do? That my, is my, crazy. Yo, my daddy bucked his eyes and looked at me. And then when we left there, because still I was fuming at this point. I was like sinking like, is this, this, just say this. I can't believe he said that. And on and everything. Yeah, and they didn't beat his ass and your family was there. I'm surprised. Why didn't they? I don't know. Mm. I think just a naiveness. Why, did he, mm, why didn't they get up and jump across that table, grab that dude, and whoop him down? Why didn't they do that? That's what most people would do <laughs> in those private meetings, entrepreneurial meetings. And she's saying that her family is naive. 
They're all from the music industry. They already know. Is this their way of getting on to the R. Kelly industry to, to latch on to him? Is that what that was? Hmm. Just a naiveness of me in the business. This is my first out. I don't know nothing. You know what I mean? And you hear those things like you'll take you'll take pretty much anything, you know, just to. Now, remember, she came from American Idol. So she had access to many different um, music industry people at the time. She could have went to Gladys Knight. She would have could have went to. Um, so many other, you know, people that Whitney Houston, she could have went to someone else, but she landed with R. Kelly. It's just ironic. And like they. To make sure opportunity. Yeah. Cause, and I'm not knowing, you know what I mean? But, um, that's disgusting. Yo, we left out of there. I'm in the backseat of my parents' car and my dad turns around. He's like, baby, I ain't going to even say what he said, but I should have took heed. Back to the tape. When you first seen the tape or heard about the tape, what did you do? What was your reaction? Because you never told us. Yeah, okay. So a lawyer con- lawyer called my home phone. I don't know how he got it, but he called me and he stated to me, um, there is a tape that possibly has one of your family members on it. Hmm. And I would like for you to uh, go to your niece, no, go to your sister and your brother-in-law and get them to um, acquire me as their lawyer. Um, so I can, you know, defend them in this tape. I was like, absolutely not, because I don't know that that's my family member on that mm-hmm. tape. Mm-hmm. So, okay, he said, I can send one of my associates over um, to show you. I was like, all right, you know, send them. I called my oldest brother. I was like, yo, they saying it's a tape with somebody on it. Um, come down here and view it with me. He was like, okay. I called them back. I was like, okay, me and my brother going to view it. He was like, no, 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 hold up, hold up. Only you can see it. So, you know, I was like, okay, bruh, don't come. I'm going to be okay. My, when I left the nest, my daddy hands me off with a banger. So I'm going to be good one way or the other. He gave you a gun. Your daddy yeah. gave you a gun. Yes, he should, did. You should have used that gun when he said jerking off. That, but, but that's uh, yeah. not the situation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, however, um, the guy comes. He shows me the tape. The first few seconds of it. I don't know if you all seen it, but I couldn't see any more of it. I said, shut it off. That, you know, that is her. Didn't she say that she's seen the tape before? Is this now an attorney or another person showing her the tape again? And she just couldn't see any more of the tape? I'm not understanding that part. Can somebody help me there? Did she see the tape by two different people based on the first part of this interview that we heard um, a while back? Um, he calls the lawyer. The lawyer's like, okay, can, you know, we get your family to view view this, blah, 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 blah. I was like, let me check. Um, the guy leaves, call my family in an uproar, like, she's on a tape, da, 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 da. And you're not even thinking that your sister and brother-in-law are, know about this, or D- I you're don't know. they're yeah. going to be so mad. Yep. So they yep. know about it already. I don't know. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I still don't know. She knows nothing. Nothing at all. You know what I mean? Um, cause they not talking to me, but anywho, um, yeah, that happens. I call the family. They say we want to view it. And then maybe an hour or 30 to an hour uh, later, 30 minutes to an hour later, everybody, it halted. Everybody's like, no, we don't want to see it. Uh, uh-uh. tell them, stop, don't come. I'm like, what the, what's going on? You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, Robert and got to him. Now I was, I was thinking about this, right. And, and I, I've been thinking about this hard. As a father, you know, there's no amount of money you could pay, pay for my daughter. Mm-hmm. But then I had to think about it like this, you know. The one good thing about her not coming out is nobody knows who's, who she is. Exactly. She can live her life now. Yeah. You know what I mean? She can walk there. She yeah. can walk in here right now and we wouldn't know who she mm-hmm. was because we don't necessarily know. She never testified. Her mm-hmm. name is not out there. We mm-hmm. don't know. Mm-hmm. But if she would have testified mm-hmm. and if she would have took that stand, mm-hmm. her face would be plastered everywhere. Yeah. And... Not that her life is. Well, I don't know. Would they show a, a minor's face? You would have her name. They would definitely like have her name and everything from. The I don't think records. they can put her name out. They Jesus. didn't, but until now. To and the, and the other issue is, aren't they still like cool with R. Kelly? I've heard rumblings, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. What's the last time you spoke to your sister? Uh, my mom passed in October. 
we buried her and then the trailer came out and I've seen her periodically but she doesn't really speak to me you know at the graveside you know go visit my mom sometimes but the last time um I spoke to her was probably right after my mom had passed have y'all spoke about the tape at all after it came out have you had a conversation she, they don't want to have that conversation with me mm -hmm. So this interference has caused her the life relationship of her family, her mother passing, not being able to connect to her brothers, her sisters, her her brother-in-law, her niece. I mean, this is, you know, she was a tight-knit uh, aunt at the very beginning. Could it be that they don't want to talk to talk about her or talk to her because she introduced this into their lives? And um and possibly the scandals and the lies that, you know, people are saying about Robert Sylvester Kelly has now intertwined her daughter's name into her, her niece's name into the lifestyle of this situation. And it's going to go down in history. Some people don't care how historically your name goes down. Um, you know, some killers are happy that their name went down in history. They got that five minutes of fame. They hurt someone and now they serve life in prison and they die there. Just that moment of fame for someone. Is it as honorable as it should be? Like, it's not. It's not at all. And so I think that that's the reason why I would stop talking to her. What's some of your views? They don't want to ask at all. No, they don't have that conversation with. What me. about with your niece? I've, I've asked, but they don't want to have that conversation with me. I still treat her with kid gloves mm -hmm. because she was so young then. I don't know her. She's I don't know She's been through a lot. what she would do. You know what I mean? So I really treat her with kid gloves. And but I told her when we did come back in good graces, I was estranged for ten years from my family mm -hmm. behind this, um, for speaking up and speaking out, telling the truth. Mm -hmm. You know and. And in, in 2011, my parents' 50th anniversary, we did a big to-do for them. And that's how we came back together. Now that this has come back up, um, we back where we were again. Right. You know what I mean? Not speaking and what have you. But she's beautiful on the outside. But, is she, but I know is she okay? she's got to be hurting. I, don't, she, I know she's screaming on the inside. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I don't know that she's gotten any help or anything like that. Now, you've said that there were a lot of things that weren't in the documentary oh, yeah. that you wish would have been in there and things that you said. Like, what are some of those things? Well, just... Um, oh, by the way, when you took off your sunglasses, you reminded me of Mary J. Blige. I swear on everything. You did. Like, I seen Mary at first. Mary, I was like... Mary, <laughs> Mary. I love Mary. I love Mary, too. But you reminded me of Mary for a second. But go ahead. <laughs> okay, so... Um... What was the question? Oh, some things that were I mean, oh, no. some things that were left out of oh, the yeah. Jackie series. So yeah, just the fact that people are thinking that I just threw my niece out there. No, they're I, blaming I, you. I, yeah, I introduced a lot of my family. Are blaming Why y'all deflecting? Like, come on, y'all. I did nothing. I definitely blame this, you too. You this know keeps coming to me. Because in the docu series, it doesn't necessarily explain well enough what exactly. happened. Exactly. It seems like. Everybody heard what was going on with R. Kelly, mm -hmm. and you still introduced. Well, no, she did that's say she like. did say that um, you know Barry Hankerson was there with yeah. Aaliyah. She didn't think that whole thing was real. The marriage is real. She thought it was a hoax. All of that was left out. Right. You know what I mean? So I sat in that hot seat for four and a half to five hours. It's a six-hour documentary. They can't put me all through there. Right. So some stuff is gonna have to you know land on the cutting room floor. So yeah, and people going you know think what they're gonna think mm -hmm. because of them not putting everything in there. So, yeah, I, that that part of me, you know, just um, sending my, uh, you know, niece in there and then leaving her in the studio. I never left my niece in the studio. Mm -hmm. And then what they don't share uh, on the piece is that I called my sister when I saw her down there by herself, when I asked, you know, what you doing here by yourself? And 30 to an hour later, my brother-in-law shows up. So never left my niece in no studio by herself and never would. Right. You still live in Chicago? I do. Have you ran into R. Kelly or seen him? Because I've seen him w running around. Have you bumped into each other at all? Uh, one time, maybe three years or so ago, he came in a restaurant um, that a, a friend of, of ours owned at the time. And he was he looked scared because he was kept doing this like I was going to jump him or something, but no, mm -hmm. I, ain't got, I ain't got nothing to say to the dude. Now, a lot of the women say that they've been getting threats. Oh, yeah. And on their lives, like, have you been threatened since all this happened? Has anyone threatened you? Not 
you know, on social media. You right. you right. need yeah, to do this. You, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? No, nah, but um, no credible threats. I, I ain't worried about them. You know, God got me. I ain't tripping on them. But yeah, I don't understand why they threaten everybody else. Go threaten that nigga. I mean, right. I, he he's the one doing it. Like, like I mean, on, even y'all. the people, people within We're his circle, Kelly, like yeah. his former yeah. his former manager, making threats. Everybody you know, in his camp Lisa probably making him. threats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I I don't understand that whole thing. Like, are y'all willing to go down in flames for dude? behind this like these are young girls you know and and even still even with my niece you know all them people were around and seeing all this stuff like y'all are, i'm i'm holding y'all accountable too wait a minute but wasn't she around in 1998 when he first popped when he first came on the scene well no he was in 1994 but Still, 1998 to 2001, you were there too every day, but all you did was go to the booth and all you did was sit in the studio and then um, be fantasized about by the singer. That's all you did. See, and this makes no sense whatsoever. She is a liar. Sparkle has um, tried to manipulate the situation, put her family on. She probably tried to make deals with R. Kelly to get her family into the limelight so that she could move forward. And it, she sabotaged it. She sabotaged it all. What are your views on this podcast here? All the ideas, the concepts, the lies, the concepts that could be taken out of context, such as subliminal messaging. Um, I believe subliminal messaging played a lot in Hollywood and the way that the story, this story particularly, started the whole ball of wax rolling. So, yeah, I just... We can still listen. I mean, you can join the Breakfast Club. I have the link in the description box below. Um, But that's enough for me. Um, We're going to look at some some, um, comments. Three years ago, Isaac Queen writes, Sparkle's family is on R. Kelly's payroll. Have so much respect for her. She testified and didn't sell her soul, even when her family ostracized her. Um, Playboy reading your comment a year ago. I'm shaking my head. This woman flat out lied. How do you know? I'm genuine in genuine curiosity how she left her husband for R. Kelly. Um, yeah, because I think she was married to someone from public announcement. I'm not sure, but yeah, the band members put it out there. Go look up the interview with Nick at night, homie. Hey fam, abandon her for introducing her niece and their baby girl to R. Kelly. Yeah, I was like, um, you forgot to mention that y'all really met when you cheated on your husband with R. Kelly when he made your album. I heard in an interview from one of the public announcements, yeah, members, saying that if a female is working on her music career with R. Kelly, there is definitely sex involved. She claims that is all a lie. Yeah, it just didn't make sense how she could be around this person who has this sexual addiction and he not try to talk to her in any way, shape, or form. They're not intimate in any way. And that's the MO, the method of operation that supposedly, allegedly, um, R. Kelly, the singer, had during this time. So with that, um, hmm. This is why I say I don't need to hear any more. Just like she didn't need to see any more of the tape. I don't need to hear any more of this um, interview because I believe she's a liar. I believe she tried to get her family involved so that she could make more money and possibly be the queen of R&B. But it didn't work like that. So this is another traditional case of a liar who convicted Robert Sylvester Kelly during the trial of um, child pornography and um, racketeering and the RICO and Man Act. Um, And this has to involve the sentencing. This has to be involved in the sentencing. So to me personally, if the trial court is a real genuine 
trial court and is fair in the United States of America, they are going to reduce sentencing because of, of things that not even the fact that he wasn't identified on the tape. Okay. And it's just really sad that I believe that that tape could have been a setup. That tape could have been marketed by anyone who was trying to take R. Kelly down at that time. So I thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing to this channel. And your comments mean so, so much. I'm just throwing things out there until I'm able to get to the sentencing stage. Um, I do believe the sentencing will be postponed until after the Chicago trial. However, I'm not sure. I haven't seen any documents um, on the docket from attorney Jennifer Bonjean, but I will definitely keep you posted on that. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. And as always, keep it 100.